from the image, you know, that uh, I have in my mind, or I've used, I use photographs, I use memory, I use drawings and so on. In the old saying, one percent is inspiration and 99 percent is perspiration. That's kind of tr true for me um, because after you you have an idea, it's trying to work it out. It's, it's, it takes all the time, right? So the work started back in 2019, uh, right uh, after I had my first son, and I was kind of transitioning from working more realistically um, and representationally to working with abstraction and trying to find a new language uh, within that type of uh, painting, and um, thinking about how to, you know, unify gesture and geometry. Um, kind of using memory and time as a way to, um, to express ideas uh, with color and form. It was, uh, every piece is kind of built on uh, a previous piece or a previous idea and the series has just continued to expand as I'm um, thinking about uh, uh, how, um, how these different elements of art can kind of come together in new ways. I've always wanted my work to be a little different and um, coming from a traditional quilting background, I moved into the art quilting realm and in the last few years have started introducing indigo shibori um, fabrics into my work. So it starts off as white fabric and I bind and dye each piece of fabric that I use and then use those fabrics to construct different designs. My inspirations come from nature and social interactions. Um, Mother Nature's the best at pattern and repetition and um, I'm always curious about social interactions so I use those thinking about those as I compose different pieces. My inspiration is I love to paint. And my influences are nature and uh, what I see around me. I feel like my inspiration originally is just because since I was a kid, I always loved art. It was something that was easy for me to do. I love drawing. I like to draw from observation just plain old pen and ink, drawing what I see in front of me. And I'm influenced by my love of nature and all my outdoor experiences and adventures, which I've, over my lifetime, I've been privileged to have many. So my inspiration influences for this piece um, have been manifesting for a long time. So this piece started in my head uh, about two years ago, maybe during the pandemic. and. This piece stems from me um, needing to have something to do with my hands. So it has a little bit to do with my mental health and um, me processing um, emotions and um, feelings and the, the external world, basically. And so I started um, to get my hands back in clay. My degree is in ceramics from Grand Valley State University. And um, in my path of being an art educator um, and an artist, uh, clay has sort of fallen away uh, for me for a couple years, several years. And during the pandemic, I found myself with my hands back in clay and just making these things, these little organic things. And uh, with that, it sort of turned into this meditation and this process of me working through what was in my head and getting it out. And so, um, you know, my influences are my life's experience, my experience with the world around me, my interaction with the world around me, and processing that uh, from an intimate level on the inside uh, to uh, these objects on the outside. I've been painting for years, um, but I never, I never felt confident in my drawing abilities. And I once heard a good painter is a good drawer. And um, I could see that in my work, that, that slight deficiency and that lack of confidence. So I thought, okay, 
2020 came around and we all know what happened. And with that extra time, I did some research and I found an online atelier, uh, Sadie Valeria Atelier out of the West Coast. For the next two and a half years, I've just been honing that skill. I planned specifically for this body of work to do eight drawings in 80 days. It ended up being a few more and then I added more onto it and I just loved working in charcoal and chalk. Um, I, I tried not to copy what I was seeing before me. In a way, you do start like that because you don't quite, as you learn the technique, you learn how to see. And when you learn how to see, you learn how to express better. And I didn't fully understand that. This process has really helped to open that up. First off, I want to thank the Lowell Arts Center. This is so great that they're um, letting me uh, share my work with a new audience. But my inspiration and influences, I come from a, a weaving background, and um, I learned how to weave down in Mexico with the backstrap loom. But when I continued on with my academic uh, kind of investigation, I found paper making. And I love paper because of all of its possibilities. It allowed me to be a, a collector of natural objects and natural um, kind of imagery as well. So I'm definitely influenced by nature. The inspiration for my work is really just being in nature, walking around in the woods, taking it slow, uh, poking around, looking under stumps, looking under stones, uh, taking a close look at mosses and mushrooms, and just really taking my time to absorb the patterns that I see repeated in nature, in my life, and things that feel like a rhythm to me. I'm influenced by artists, modernists, uh, like George O'Keefe and and Diego Rivera, and uh, surrealist to some degree too. I'm, I love Leona Carrington, artists that uh, look a little past reality. And I always like to call, uh, when I'm making my work, I like to feel like it, I'm running what I see through my personal processor. So it's almost like I'm seeing something different at the same time as seeing reality. And then if I can only just get it on the canvas, what I see, I really feel like, you know, maybe this time I've, I've been able to reproduce what I'm seeing and feeling. My inspiration for a lot of this artwork came from ideas that I had um, related to American idioms. The whole series is kind of around American idioms or sayings that we, that we have in our language, also combined with my farm animals as an inspiration. So I took things like in the doghouse, like if you're in the doghouse, and I made a dog in the house, so it's called in the house dog. So I took the titles of things that we would normally hear in language and switched them around and kind of made some fun um, images out of that, out of that concept. So my farm animals and ideas related to things that we hear in language. I was uh, ready to take a flight from Newark, New Jersey to Grand Rapids and a friend of mine called and said, hey, I need you to do an illustration of a car in the next three hours. Well, that wasn't possible since I was on a plane. So I pulled my computer out and I pulled up Apple's version of PowerPoint, which is called Keynote, and I proceeded to sketch a car in that medium, which of course is for making slides and stuff. But then I got pretty intrigued with it and I just kept sketching. And one thing led to another and I just kept developing ideas and cars in my brain and wanted to translate them into that media. So I had a lot of fun with it. I'm mostly a painter, a brush painter. I, did, I do use different tools. I have a lot of paper paintings for my smaller pieces. I sometimes I will make a print on a plate. I paint on the plate, I make a print from the plate so that the whole thing is reversed. And so I'm not focused on the image so much that I can um, look at it completely from a different perspective. That helps my, my uh, composition, um, which is uh, what I spend most of my time on. 
Uh, many of the works started initially as a painted idea, so I would uh, do a small um, detailed painting, and then from there I would take that and explore the same uh, composition and uh, collection of shapes uh, through graphite drawing, and then I started combining those as well to make new pieces and that are combining multiple images at once. And my thinking on that was to be able to explore material, but also um, stay true to something that I've always been really interested in, which is detailed, um, detailed or carefully considered drawing, um, which doesn't always have a clear place in abstraction. As far as special techniques and skills, um, using an indigo vat is a specialized skill. You have to have a little bit of um, practice and playing with that before you can get success out of it. The shibori techniques are something that I've been um, learning for the last few years. Um, it's a matter of folding and binding and, and that type of thing. Um, I've been dyeing fabric for 25 plus years, but the indigo is a natural dye and is a different process. And the shibori is um, a little more labor intensive than the other dyeing processes. I use paper and found objects, uh, cloth, whatever I could find, and then I embed that in my canvas, and then I paint over it. Uh, I just have a lot of fun doing it, and I, it comes in my own brain, my own mind, what I want to do. My technique is, again, inspired by my fascination with mixing everything together. I like things to be complicated. I like processes to be long and involved. And so I find that I draw and cut up all kinds of materials and mix them all together. Um, that's what I like to do. It's me coming back to my roots, my roots of working in ceramics. And so they're, they're very basic skill set. Uh, that you learn when you start to uh, take the path of working in ceramics from very simple hand building techniques and pinching forms in my hands. So there's very limited uh, tools other than my two hands um, and maybe just a mug full of tools that I use to create these. Um, other than that, it's just my inspiration for the world around me that helps me to gather information on textures and um, other forms, organic forms, that I incorporate within my work. After working in graphite, I switched to charcoal, a very beautiful painterly medium, a good transition into paint, which I've started now. Uh, charcoal has a wider value range, so you get darker darks and with the chalk, lighter lights than in graphite. Um, and you can move it around really well. I use brushes with my work. I don't use my fingers, I don't use a stomp or a tertullian. Another technique I learned, it's a straight line block in drawing. You work from the shoulder, standing at an easel, uh, all straight lines. Very little measuring, although you do use a, a, a stick to just get angles and whatnot, but uh, it, it teaches you an intuitive way of, of blocking in the, um, the forms, the objects that you're looking at in a still life. With the paper making, there's some interesting equipment that a lot of people might have seen. And this is called the paper maker's mold and the decal. And this acts like the corral that keeps all the paper pulp on the surface of this big screen. I make pulp and in a slurry state and fill a vat with water. And then I dip this mold into the vat and collect the fiber that then allows me to make the sculptures that I make. When I make my oil paintings, I definitely work in numerous light layers, uh, thin layers and transparent layers, until the very end, I, I add the whitest whites and the darkest darks. But overall, of course, my work is very soft. My brushes are very soft. It's kind of funny, um, I use brushes that are just terrible. They're, they've been used for years and years. They're all blown out like big, flat, scrubby things. But chances are that's the one that I'm going to use uh, 
to make a painting and then sometimes I even I wear them right down to stubs and then throw them out when the painting's done. So, or I'll just buy some cheap ones and throw them out. I'm definitely not a brush snob because it's not the brush. It's definitely the hand. My artwork is done with printmaking techniques, which means there are a lot of different tools and techniques used that are not common in ordinary artwork. For example, um, some of my pieces were done on antique, uh, antique printing presses. Um, they're all hand carved with special carving tools that are very sharp and dangerous. Um, the process takes a lot of time. First, you have to sketch out your idea on a surface like linoleum or wood. And then you hand carve each little corner and each little groove um, and to, you carve away the negative space typically. So you have to think backwards and think about your lines, your shapes, your textures, and how all of those things are going to turn out to make an image in the end. So the process is very tedious and um, the good thing about it is it's printmaking so I can make more than one print. I typically in a series or in addition um, make between 10 to 25 images off of one plate. So um, also that is tedious because I am hand inking each one. So the process of making one print can take anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour just depending on the inks used. Um, so it, each one probably took me a few months to come up with and, and actually turn into a print. Um, it's something I love doing and um, there are different prints in my series that I brought here. Um, some of them are also etched, so that's a little bit different where the ink is put into the grooves and pulled out. Um, some of them are relief prints, which means the ink is applied to the surface and pulled off onto the paper that way. Obviously, you start with um, skill development, which you learn you know, in design school, and all those things that you learned as fundamentals, which are so important to foundational part of any kind of design work. And from there, you just keep building on it, um, using that information to fuel your next step and your next exploration, what you're trying to accomplish, and seeing how far you can push yourself. So whether it's the medium you're actually using or the design concept, always pushing yourself um, to, to explore differently is what the goal is. I hope, you know, when, when I am inspired by a, you know, something that I, I see, and it's very uh, intuitive, I don't have, I don't analyze it, I just intuitive, intuitively be drawn to something and then I work it out and so my hope is that that, that same uh, initial, you know, thing that inspired me will come through. Something that I always really love about uh, art in general is that it's a, an opportunity for the viewer to uh, find a place to make a connection with either the artist or maybe something completely not connected to the artist or the artist's intentions. So I really love the idea of somebody looking at my work and um, it resonating in a way that maybe had nothing to do with what I was thinking about, but it holds something special for them. What I hope the viewer gets out of my work is a compassion or an understanding of traditional art can be moved into the art realm. Quilting typically isn't seen as an art form, but it can be when the maker pushes design and pushes um, things into a new, unique way. My work started out as traditional quilting and some of the pieces in the show have traditional blocks in them, but I've used them in a different and unique way. So I hope they see that traditional or folk art can be pushed into a non-traditional art form. I would like to have them feel happy. I love bright colors. And there's so much unhappiness in the world today, and I would really like to see people feel happy when they look at my work, realizing that I am a happy person as well. I'm very open to the viewer coming from their own place and 
discovering whatever they like. I just hope that they will be interested. I hope that they will be a little bit surprised or amused or grab something out of what they see that maybe they weren't quite expecting beforehand. As in any artwork, uh, there's what I need to get from the piece as a visual artist and what it means to me, which um, in this piece is very intimate and very in depth. And my viewers, uh, I really allow to be able to come and take away what they need to take away from this piece. Um, from a very formal standpoint, this piece has a lot to do with uh, variations on a theme, which has been a part of my work for many, many years. So taking very basic, uh, simple forms, three-dimensional forms, and then challenging myself to come up with how many manifestations or different forms can those be. Um, the piece is entitled Fragmented Augmentation. So the idea of changing parts, um, not only through physical, the physical work itself, but then um, also taking a deeper dive into what does that mean to us um, existing in this world and how our lives change parts and the parts are always changing and the situation's always changing and what stays constant and what evolves into new and beautiful things. To have the viewer just take a moment to just see them, to find a place of, of quietness, of rest, which I think would benefit many people right now, myself included, um, even silence, and maybe have something uh, to enter with their imagination into that space and see those objects uh, in a new way or, or for the first time, uh, objects that we see all the time, and to see how the light washes over the form. That would, that would really be a gift, um, I think, for the viewer if they're able to do that, and if not, that's, that's fine too. It's not for everybody. Um, but I'm learning how to do that myself with artwork when I go to, to see artwork in museums and galleries. Um, I just think that's the what art really is, is a gift to the viewer of some form of expression, something we can reflect on and, and learn from. I'd really like to have people get from my work is this sense of slowing down and seeing something that's maybe um, much quieter, much more on an intimate scale. And I think of these as curiosities. I think of them as invitations to look more closely at nature. A lot of these particular pieces have grape stems that are the armature that the paper pulp is formed around. And there's no glue that's used. It's really cool that it's a, it's a little bit of science, a little bit of art, that when things uh, dry down, it's called pulp welding in my um, kind of terminology, but it's uh, the scientific part of it, it's, it's hydrogen bonding, which uh, that totally throws people when they think, oh, there's a lot of science behind this. I hope this doesn't sound too corny, but, and I am a teacher too, and what I try to tell uh, my students or anyone who will listen to me is that really when I'm sitting there painting on my easel, I'm just painting with, this sounds so corny, but it just, it's, I'm trying to express all the love I have in my heart. When I'm looking at the canvas, I'm going, I love this snowball. I love this mushroom. I love that tree. I love that pattern. And so all I'm doing is getting that feeling onto the canvas. And I really hope that that can be seen. I think the overall feeling that I would like the viewer to have when looking at my work um, is a happiness or joyfulness and um, maybe thoughtfulness as far as thinking about how line and texture and form play a role in images. The whole series was created with a very fun uh, meaning to it, just kind of lighthearted and joyful, and I hope people look at them and are happy. Well, I would just like to connect with people's love for cars. It's such a ubiquitous part of our everyday lives and something that some of us see every day and some of us don't see every day depending on how you look at the object. So cars are a passion and hopefully I can connect with that passion in someone else and have them think about what I'm forwarding as an idea and as a concept, uh, concept and see if they relate to it.